Mary here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's WMA on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you. Now, let's play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods, Ink's Path. So, before we jump right back into it, just want to let y'all know our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chandy, we're up and let's go. Alright, going with Ink. <clears throat> what? I blink, looking down at the big dog as his mouth curls into a small smile, his eyes fluttering open ever so slightly. River pushes me aside, leaning down over his face, sniffing his bruised muzzle. She pulls away, turning towards the possum on the couch with a cold, deadpan expression. He's drunk. Mason casually shrugs his shoulders, lowering the hip flash from his lips. You were carrying the oxy. She groans, pressing her palm to her forehead. And it didn't occur to you that alcohol thins your blood? River practically growls at the possum, who simply shoots a glance down at the flask in his paw. If he has a fucking concussion and you got him drunk, you're dead. Before turning back to the intoxicated canine. And there wasn't even any oxy in my bag. I thought those things were supposed to be pre-packed. Blame Shep. Guess since you haven't been out much, he took it out. I swear to fucking God, the hyena is going to be the death of you all. She mumbles as she lifts a small pen above Lucas's bruised face. As she presses the back of it, I realize it's a flashlight. She carefully pries his eyes open with her free paw, examining them. Lucas, in his unsober state, lifts his, lifts his big arm back up, weakly paw, pawing at her side. Is he... D does he have a concussion? Another moment passes as she moves the flashlight back and forth. She tosses it aside with a sigh. Can't tell while he's fucking wasted. Is there anything else I can help him with? Massaging her eyes, she straightens her head with a sigh. Give me the stapler, I nod, turning to snatch it off the desk. River prepares the fre a fresh cloth, cleaning the blood out of the fur around the wound. And turn that lamp on! She tilts her head up at a desk lamp next to the stretcher. I lean forward, reaching over Lucas to get to the switch. Lucas rolls his head, throwing his arm over my back. I turn it on, but when I go to back away, Lucas holds me in place. You're so warm, he mumbles. And wet. I carefully slide out from underneath his heavy arm, placing it down by his side. He's right, though. My clothes are still pretty damp from the swim earlier. Using my claws, I open the plastic holder uh, plastic holder to make, to make sure it's loaded before handing it to River. She takes a quick look at it before getting to work. I awkwardly stand at her side, watching as she begins stapling his torn skin back together. Figuring I should make myself useful, I grab another cloth and begin cleaning his face. As carefully as I can, I pull the cloth along his muzzle. Rinsing the dried blood out of his thick fur, he instinctively tilts his head away, so I bring my other paw up to hold his head in place. He mumbles something under his breath I can't quite catch as I work the wet rag against his face. I'm so sorry, Lucas. After another couple of minutes and a few trips back and forth to clean the rag in the, clean the, rag in the sink, most of the blood is gone. I step back, running a paw through my hair. Hell of a night, huh? I jump as the possum speaks up behind me, leaned up against the concrete pillar. I let out a weak chuckle, nodding with a sigh as I step over. Mason digs his, paws in, his paw down his pocket, pulling out his hip flask, stainless steel but wrapped in black electrical tape. He offers it to me, shrugging his shoulders as if to say, why not? Oh, no, River gave me painkillers. I object in a low voice. So, uh, so, a sweat can't hurt. You deserve it, dude. A toast to staying alive. Take a swig. I glance over at the rabbit, focused on wrapping Lucas's paw in a bandage before taking the bottle. Fuck it, whatever, a swig never killed anyone. I take it, lifting the worn opening to my nose. It smells just like cough syrup. Sweet licorice fennel anise. Yep, I know exactly what it is. I press it to my lips and throw my head back. God, so sweet! I shiver, rolling my tongue. Mason snickers, taking the flask back and downing a big gulp himself. Could be worse. I guess. Could be mint. What? You don't like mint? It's like, you know, water time. Not an alcohol. I had an awful experience it a few years back. Can barely taste the alcohol when it's mint. Mason grins, rolling his neck before resting his head against the stone support. But that's the best part, man. Shep loves that shit. Mint chocolate, mint ice cream. He trails off, smirking. Guess old people just love mint, huh? I can't help but chuckle with him. 
Hey, what happened to the prince dude? Mason asks, looking between me and River. River keeps her focus on the big dog, not bothering to turn around. Raccoon shot him. Mason turns to me. Right? I sigh, nodding. Did you kill him? River stops, her head ear turning towards us. I can't tell if she'd prefer if, you say, if I said yes or no. No, no, I don't think so. Didn't look like it. Mason nods, screwing the cat back on the flask and sliding it down his back pocket. Shane, you could have dumped this corpse in the river if you did. I shrunk my paw along my neck. I feel like there was enough death tonight as it is. I've been there for three days and I've already got two people killed. I shake my head. Don't want to think about that right now. I don't want to think about any of this right now. Instead, I turned to the possum, clearing my throat. So, the smoke canisters were your idea? I point a claw down at his pocket, where the outline of the hip flask sits. Same black tape as the canister I threw back at the mill. Not to mention the writing on that one. Mason glances down at it, shaking his head. Nah, Shep got a hold of those. I just painted them. I raise an eyebrow. What? They looked rad as fuck, didn't they? He gives me a smug expression. I shrug, but let out a small chuckle and nod. Yeah, I guess. Gotta get some more of them, though. I think those were the only ones we had. Wanna come with me? What, right now? Yeah, why not? I look back over at Lucas and River. I don't know. Nubby knows what she's doing. He'll be fine. She'll get him to the hospital, no problem. Right, Nubby? She simply responds with a quick thumbs up. I'll drive you back to Lou's place after, don't worry. Plus, you really want to keep working after everything that went down tonight? I open my mouth to answer, but before I can, the sound of tires rolling down the gravel road outside fills the room. River notices it, too. She quickly ties off a piece of gauze, tossing the roll aside. Mason just as quickly straightens himself against the pillar, crossing his arms. It's like a parent coming home early when the kids got to the cookie jar. The tone of the entire place changes in an instant. Help me get him in the car. I quickly step over, helping her get Lucas off the stretcher. Shepard appears in the doorway, two plastic bags in one hand, a small paper one in the other. He stops as soon as he spots us approaching. Where were you? The hyena cocks an eyebrow, lifting his thumb to the point to point at the car outside and opening his mouth to answer. Whatever, doesn't matter. We carry Lucas towards the door, the tall beast now blocking the exit. How bad is it? Bad. She answers in a flat tone, heaving Lucas's left arm over her shoulders to adjust her grip as we stop in front of the hyena. She pauses, closing her eyes. It's clear how exhausted she is after tonight's events. I don't blame her. He needs a hospital. Shepard tenses up. We can't risk that. Not after tonight. Shep, no, he needs to go. It's bad. Doc, you know we can't, we can't risk. Oh, fuck the risk. He stays here. He'll have permanent damage. She reaches back into her back pocket, still handed from earlier, peeking out. The shepherd raises his tone in response. Giant's been hurt while out hunting. You take him to the hospital now and we'll blow our cover. Who gives a fuck about our cover? Lou is seriously hurt. It's like, you know, water's on. And we're back, y'all. Okay. Lucas knew what he was getting into. He doesn't need you fucking it all up. It's the first time I've heard him call Lucas by his name. Their tones immediately make it clear they've had similar arguments before, or at least heated arguments in general. This is what being a hunter means, and this is what we signed up for. That's the risk we all take. He tosses the bags to the side, not taking his eyes off her to see where they land. He, has, he balls his fists and squares it. He balls his fists and squares his shoulders as if readying himself for a fight. This is worth dying. This is worth dying for. It's very fucking rich coming from you. She pulls the blade free of her pocket, clutching it tight behind her back. Where were you tonight, huh? Because we were all out there risking our fucking lives while you sat cooped up in there like a fucking coward. The last words echo off the cold brick walls like a gunshot as her voice cracks ever so slightly, and me and Shep both recoil. At the corner of my eye, I see Mason do the same. For a second, it looks like as if Shepard is ready to strangle the white rabbit right there and then. I don't dare speak. But he doesn't. He stays still, stoic as ever as if carved out of stone, eyes fixed on River. A moment of silence which feels like hours passes as River stares up the most fiery glare at the tall beast, her teeth bared nostrils flaring. She forces some composure, swallowing hard. We don't have a choice at this point. He needs to go to the hospital tonight. Shepard huffs in frustration, clenching his jaw. 
eyes finally leaving her and darting to the side. This is amateur. We're better than this. All this could have been avoided if he just... He hooks his digit towards me, eyes back on the rabbit, talking as if I'm not even here. And whose fault is that? Herber retorts in an icy tone. I can see the hyena's shoulders tensing harder, his breathing growing heavier. His implication hurts more than I'd like to admit, and certainly won't, and certainly more than I let on, even if it is deserved. Mason suddenly clears his throat behind us, drawing their intense stares towards him. What if we just keep it off the record? We all turn to look at him, leaning against the pillar. River blinks. What? You know, like when you took Strike Tail there. Check it under a different name. I had my voice quieter than I had intended. Or not check him in at all. You went to sneak him through the back door. The possum nods with a small shrug, not quite meeting Shepard's eyes, but looking off to the side slightly. I mean, if River works there, shouldn't she be too out of too out of place if we were caught? She wouldn't be too out of place if we were caught. I don't work nights. You should. It would make nights like if, like these easier on your sleep. Could you fucking not? Shepard sighs, digging through his pocket and pulling out a key ring with a familiar green tag. Lucas's keys. But you're staying here for a debriefing. <sighs> he lifts a claw at me. River looks him up and down, snatching the keys out of his paw. You're in no damn position to give orders right now. Before we make our way past him outside. <sighs> I reach over Lucas's broad frame in the passenger seat to buckle the seatbelt. River combs her hair back with a paw, climbing into the driver's seat. Tiny! I feel my stomach sink. Please don't shout at me. I take a deep breath and muster the courage to turn around. Shepard steps to the grass, holding the bags he brought earlier. I, cho I close the passenger side door, looking down at them. Clothes. Dry. He lifts them one at a time. For you, giant. And Doc. He glances over at River through the, through the windscreen. Mason leans up against the doorframe behind him, crossing his arms, car keys in one paw. Oh, water time. Oh, that's good coffee. Oh, I needed that. Are you going with them? I glance between the three of them, Lucas, Mason, and Shepard. Go ahead, go with Mason. No, I'm going with Mason. Here. Yeah. Uh, All right there. Anyways, okay. No, I'm going with Mason. We're going to get uh, supplies. Since we used up those canisters. The possum pushes off the frame, walking over to his car with a slight limp. I just hope his leg is okay. Shepard nods, his eyes on the ground. Good. He steps past me, placing one of the plastic bags in the back seat behind Lucas. He hands me the brown paper bag, now darkened in some spots. I got you this. Figured you might need it. I hold the bag up. What is it? Hey, Stripe Tail, you coming? I look over at I look over as Mason climbs into his seat. Keep an eye on him. I nod, although I'm not entirely sure what he means by it. I step over to Mason's little city car, climbing into the passenger seat. I'll uh, I'll see ya. He pauses for a moment, finally lifting his gaze to meet mine. He gives a curt nod, letting his eyes fall back on the gravel path. I close the door as Mason fires up the engine. You sure you're all right to drive? Of course, Striped Tail. I barely had anything to drink tonight. Reluctantly, I nod. We roll down the gravel road, river close behind. Shepard gla clasps his paws behind his back, watching his sleeve as he slowly fades out of view of the rearview mirror. And despite the argument inside, I can't help but think to how lonely he looks. <sighs> Fucking finally! Seems everyone's in a bad mood tonight, huh? I sigh, turning back to the brown bag in my lap, opening it up and pull out a greasy, oversized sandwich. Alright y'all, I am actually going to pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway y'all, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye